We'll begin by considering the spectrum of amplitude shift keying by considering rectangular pulses. I'll set up the pulse G of T as having an amplitude A and a total bit width of T sub B, but I have it centered about zero, so we run from minus TB over two to plus TB over two. Writing that as a rect function, uh, hopefully you've seen something like that before. In the frequency domain, we know that a rect function looks like a sync function. Now, it's a little bit easier to think about this as a uh, magnitude form, so I've just redrawn that a, a bit more carefully that way. The Fourier transform of G of T looks like this, and the definition I'm using for sync function looks like that. Most, most uh, textbooks in the literature use that definition for sync, although there are some exceptions. The null points occur at reciprocals of the, the bit interval, and they occur at integer multiples of that. Our bit rate is the reciprocal of our bit period. So we could also think of these nulls as occurring at integer multiples of our bit rate. Now we see that the sync function extends pretty far on both sides. Uh, standard way of defining the bandwidth would be starting from DC and going out to the first null. Call that the first null bandwidth. And that has a value of your bit rate, again, which is equivalent to the reciprocal of your bit interval. To put a number on that, supposing we were signaling at 1,000 bits per second. That says the required bandwidth then is at least one kilohertz. But we see that since the the sync has fairly long tails, so to speak, that the the, the actual uh, spectrum extends to uh, several or, or many kilohertz, fairly fairly wide band sort of signal. Now let's consider modulating this as we do in amplitude shift keying modulation. So I'll let the new signal or new version of GFT be the rect, or rectangular pulse multiplied by our carrier signal. So we're using the rect to indicate the amplitude of that, that carrier. So I'm referring back to the fact that we know that this is a sync. And we also know then that when you modulate by a cosine or multiply by a cosine, then that shifts one replica of your baseband signal one direction to the right. And we also then need to divide by two. We get another replica that's shifted to the left by the carrier frequency amount. So this is applying the so-called modulation property of the Fourier transform. So the same picture appears uh, shifted, one shifted to the right to be centered about the carrier frequency and one shifted to the left. So I'll take this baseband spectrum and translate that to the right. Take another copy and translate that to the left. And at this point, when we're trying to consider bandwidth, we need to look at the double-sided bandwidth here. So in this case, null-to-null uh, -null bandwidth would be double what we saw for the baseband signal because we have both of that positive side frequency and the negative side frequency showing up. So it'd be twice our bit rate or two divided by the bit interval. Now again, these tails extend for a pretty significant direction on either side. So we say that this rectangle function or rectangle shaped pulse would be said to be spectrally inefficient. 
because we see that the while you know much of the energy is concentrated about FC, uh, a lot of the significant energy is spread on on both sides. This has some disadvantages, especially if you're trying to operate other carriers nearby, because now you can have uh, potential for crosstalk between one carrier to the next.